you cannot put Romex in a conduit if the conduit's outside. You can only put Romex in a conduit if the conduit is inside a house. Okay, I mentioned that in one of my videos and people flipped out. I, I didn't know that was a controversial thing. Well, here I am, I'm bringing the receipts as the kids say. I'm gonna show you all the code references that say you cannot put Romex inside a pipe if the pipe's outside. You can only put Romex in a conduit if the conduit's inside. And I had that little hesitation in the beginning before I said, if the pipe's outside, just to trigger angry Sparky. We'll see if he uh, paused right there, had a heart attack, made an entire video before he listened any further, because he just might have. Not sure what order to attack the code articles, because there's four of them that reference you're not allowed to do it. And also, this video will include my most boring demonstration ever. <laughs> Wait till the end for the exciting demonstration. But, uh, all right, let's figure out where to start. Okay, where I'm going to start is definitions, apparently, because I just rewatched my video. I am inconsistent with my use of pipe, raceway, and conduit. I'm going to bounce back and forth between all that just to keep it a natural speaking pace. But PVC conduit is a raceway. So let's start there. Okay, 2023 definitions. PVC, rigid polynuclear, a rigid non-metallic raceway. Okay, so from now on, the terms conduit and raceway can be exchanged as I'm speaking. Okay, our next stop will be in the 2020. And in the 2020, 300.9 says raceways in wet locations above grades. Raceways, right, you guys can read. I, I can never read out loud when I'm holding my phone. But what that says is, where it's highlighted, the interior of these raceways shall be considered a wet location. So if the raceway is a wet location, the inside of the raceways, raceway is a wet location. And this 310.10c, we'll get to that in a minute. But... That same wording is in the 2023. This is 2023. Same wording is in 2023. And like I've said in other videos, if your claim is that's a new rule, I am oddly equipped to discuss when that became a new rule. So I have a code book collection back to the 70s. That rule very well could be in these older code books. But the first time I found it listed as 300.9 with that exact wording is in 2008. And 2008... 300.9 says it right here. Wet locate if the pipe isn't if the conduit is installed in a wet location inside that conduit is also considered a wet location. Okay, we're in the 2020 now. And this might be where some of the confusion comes from. The article is for NM and NMC. We don't have we don't use NMC in houses. Nowadays we use NMB. NMC was a type of NM that could get wet. But I'll talk about this a little bit more later. It basically got unpopular from what I've been told and now has been replaced by UF. So I don't even know if you can still get this, but people just nowadays use UF in the situations where they used to use this. So we're looking at NMB, NM, right? So uses not permitted, type NM, wet location, see, NMB, wet locations. So 334, Dot 12, B4. You cannot use NM in wet locations. And I can't show you that in my 23 code because I've already worn out my NM page and it's gone. It fell out of the book. So this is NFPA link, which is what I use for my 23 code normally. It's the same wording as 20. Nothing's changed. And the same NM can't get wet is in all of these. It's not as clear, right, because of the popularity of NMC. But even in my 1947 code book, it says NM has to be installed in normally dry locations or can't be exposed to excessive moisture or dampness. But it's not quite as clear as don't do it because, like I said, NMC was popular back in the day. Most people seem to believe, and this may be a factor, that if you strip it off and get rid of the paper, that it can go in a conduit. You notice not a single code article I referenced said anything about the paper because that's not the issue. Technically, I'm going to show you another code article, Technically, when you strip it out and slide these in the conduit, it's still a violation even if you get rid of the paper. Let me show you where it says that. So to find out why we can't strip it, we got to go back to 300.9. So 300.9 says, this is, you know, interior is wet, blah, blah, blah. Insulated conductors in the wet locations above grade shall comply with 310.10C. Let's go see what that says. Okay. 310.10C, wet locations. It must be, so anything that's going to go in the wet location must be labeled as one of these installations. 
you must be have that labeling on it. See all the different types of insulation? So now, when you buy a spool of wire, I don't think I'm going to be able to show you this on camera. See the lettering? That lettering on it is where you'll find the THWN saying this can go in a wet location. Okay, so when, if you ever noticed when you buy a spool of wire, it is labeled on the side as to where it can be used and what the insulation is good for. And let's see what happens when you strip out Romex. All right, so I've stripped out this Romex and individual conductors in wet locations must be labeled that they, one of those types of insulation. Let's see what it says on Romex conductors after you strip them out. There is no labeling for the type of insulation this is. It very well could be THHN and work there, but it doesn't meet the code standard of telling us that's what it is. So I think it's not. I mean, I, I can imagine, I don't know, I'm on the fence. I can imagine it costs more money to make an installation that is rated for wet locations. And if they had put that money into this, they would proudly label it. So I would think that they didn't put the work into this to make it good for wet locations. But maybe at this point, they just have one machine making wire and they make all the same insulation. I'm not sure because this isn't labeled. So this does not meet the code minimum standard to go in a wet location. So what gets me is some states have made this an exception that you can. Like that's foolish. I understand if guys on the job site break the rules when nobody are looking, but for a code making panel to have this much code stacked against them and to make an amendment that goes against it, I think is foolish. Especially when they make this, this is UF. It's basically as easy to work with as Romex. It's slightly harder to strip, not any harder to strip with proper technique. You don't need to put a junction, you don't need to do anything. And this can go outside wet locations. So instead of making that amendment, why don't those states just say, hey guys, keep 20 feet of UF on your truck. And you can either put a junction and transition over to the UF or because it's basically the same cost, it's pennies difference, run this back to the panel. On the circuits, you know they're gonna go outside and up or something like that. Or like I did in one of my videos, fish it up the wall. But anyway, yeah, so now time for the boring experiment. Before the experiment, I wanted to add one more thing that I forgot when I reviewed the video. 1103B says we have to follow manufacturer's instructions. And what do they say in the out pack outside packaging of Roman? They call it indoor wiring. Indoor wire. <laughs> so all that other stuff I said, if you just go by what the manufacturers call it, and here is the spec sheet from the Romex brand name company themselves. Look directly above my head. Not wet or damp locations. Okay, the most boring, slow experiment I'll ever do. We get the Patriots bucket. I can represent the Patriots again now that they suck without just getting accused of being a homer or bandwagon or whatever. But this is what we got. Romex in the water, in the conduit, outside. UF in the water, in the conduit, outside. THHN in the water, in the conduit, outside, exposed to sun. And then that other white wire is stripped out Romex. I don't know. I'm just going to leave this in my backyard. Today is October 22nd, 2023. And we'll see like every six months if my channel lasts that long. If one deteriorates faster than the other. So in closing, maybe you're just going to say 300.9 that says inside the pipe's wet is wrong. I disagree. Well, there's a way to try to change the code if you can have evidence that disproves that. But I don't know the backstory, but I can't imagine it wasn't there in 08. I mean, it wasn't there in 05 and they added it for 08 on a whim. Somebody had to have some sort of testing showing whether it's through condensation, bad fittings, not the PVC is not designed to have watertight fittings the way plumbing is. Whatever it is, somebody had to show inside there was wet. And if you disagree, you got to prove it. You can't just say, I disagree with the code because of my pet peeves. That's what asshole inspectors do, okay? If we can't blame the asshole inspectors for enforcing their pet peeves, then we can't be asshole contractors ignoring rules that are our pet peeves. All right, thanks very much.